Okay, so I plan to send it. Yeah, and then hi everyone again. Welcome to the LPS lecture. Um, we actually uh, we went through several concepts on uh, Python last time around. Um, the important ones are first of all we kind of um, talked about the tuples, the list as a data structure, and then how we can operate on them. Um, that was the main focus uh, from last time. I think um, you guys remember that. Um, today we will be continuing with uh, that. Actually, the um, um, uh, on Python programming essentially. So um, Python programming itself, we covered a lot of things so far. Um, uh, so um, um, as you know, we talked about the control flow, the um, the um, the data flow itself, with uh, starting with various data structures, the string, the uh, integer types, uh, the floating point types, things like that. Um, then in the last uh, lecture, um, we covered the um, the two other new types like the tuples and the, uh, the lists, and we kind of we went through how to operate on them, how do we index them, things like that. Um, so. I think uh, right now um, we have a good understanding of uh, how um, the Python programming actually works, so that we can take uh, the next step of going to some of the um, advanced concepts. Um, so um, uh, yeah, we also talked about the collections and basically like what collections mean, which is uh, another data structure that we talked about you know, when we talked uh, when we. Um, Discussed uh, tickle essentially and collections as a data structure. What uh, Synopsis supports that we talked about. Um, so similar uh, collections are available in Python. We talked about them. Uh, so today, what we are going to um, go through is basically some of the advanced functions. Um, essentially, we are going to talk about how to pass uh, lists and keyword dictionaries to functions. Then we also will talk about uh, something called the lambda function, which is a, actually a, it's a function generator. So we will talk about that. Then we will talk about some of the functions like apply, map, filter, reduce, and uh, we also will go through some more uh, understanding of the list, like uh, list comprehensions. So let's uh, begin um, today's uh, lecture. Uh, so. How do we pass lists as arguments? So the list can be passed in cases where um, there may be a variable number of arguments. So this is something that we saw in uh, a tickle as well. Our like uh, when we specify this specific, special um, um, parameter in the in, as a function, and then you can pass the arguments. So here. Um, there's a list arg dot pi here we are defining this function as um, um, sum the the function's name is sum and then we say basically the arguments are uh, we denoted like this basically and then um, we say like the result is zero for arg in args result plus r and then the return results so here since the star args is, a, is itself is a pointer, we can actually then pass a list into this. So now, like if you say like print sum of one, two, three, the answer is six. So note the syntax of uh, how do we pass the um, argument. So um, then now the the keyword arguments essentially like I mean so. Uh, the caller of a function can place the arguments in the correct order, so that is the positional argument. So that is uh, this is something that we saw even in uh, a tickle as the positional versus uh, the non-positional stuff. Um, so um, some sometimes we can actually change the order by assigning keywords. So how do we pass that? So for example. Um, um, so here like I mean uh, in this one this example it is a function with uh, arguments in the wrong order but the arguments are passed with the keyword syntax so that it does not matter. So how do we do that so in, in um, um, 
skeptical we saw some uh, newer constructs to handle this kind of an issue uh, we talked about that uh, here let us see basically like so um, um, print hello basically like, and then uh, we have the first name equals uh, and then the last name equals and then we can say like okay pass the hello print the first name last name and then those are the two um, uh, names that are passed into the function. Now if you want to um, so standard one is basically like I mean you can, you can just write it like I mean what is the uh, if you just say hello uh, Sam or David Shrill I mean Cheryl then it will print exactly the same. But if you want to actually interchange the argument, you can just say that last name equal to Cheryl and first name equal to David as a hard assignment with these uh, uh, function names, then it will actually print appropriately. So even though here the order is interchanged, basically the last name comes first, this is first, and then this is second, but it prints correctly. Which is the first name and the last name. So this is one way to pass the, the keyword arguments essentially. So um, when we have like specific, like when we change the order, then uh, this may be useful. Um, so what happens if you are missing keywords um, and the positional arguments? So um, this is also like something that we saw like how do we pass when we um, talked about tickle uh, what if some arguments are missing and we want to pass it appropriately there we use make the use of the um, uh, tickles understanding of what uh, strict um, 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 uh, substitution uh, strings basically the curly braces and the uh, quotes and then we made use of it to pass these kind of arguments. So here how do we do it like in Python, uh, so we saw already like the, the star operator which is used as a variable length of argument, so we can use the same concept to um, designate all arguments after uh, this as the keyword arguments. So and this is something that is new in uh, Python 3, so here we have an example. Again, the area we say basically like uh, x, y, and then we say like the star operator, and then we say units equal to inches. So now, when we do print x times y, and then we say like square, um, and then we say basically like square this particular units. So if you say basically like two, three, and then centimeters. Gives you this uh, square centimeters. So the star essentially, like I mean, it captures this. So if you omit this, then the units is taken as inches. If you put it, then the units become whatever that uh, star that you specify. And now um, the other important thing is passing the dictionary uh, to functions. As you know, like dictionaries are the associative arrays that we saw in um, Perl, and then we also saw a similar concept in uh, Tickle, and uh, in Python they are called dictionaries. Uh, I hope you remember that. Um, and we are going to be talking about uh, dictionaries uh, even in more detail later on. But um, here, in this one, essentially, like we have this um, particular. Um, um, uh, function called print and then we specify it now we specify two stars and then uh, the kw args so this is the keyword argument so basically for each key in keyword args dot keys essentially and then we can print um, what is the key and what is the value So um, here we say basically like okay so here is an example of user info is dictionary name, user ID and home directory, there are three fields here. 
So if you do say like you know, print date star star user info, um, I think like this one is like print underscore date actually. So um, and then um, the output is essentially like I mean user ID is five ninety three, name is David, and then the um, home directory is uh, particular home directory like slash home slash user slash David. So one thing that uh, you want to note is we talked about this earlier also like when we talked about the dictionary database or dictionary data structure the dictionary entries are unordered unlike lists or even triple for that matter. Um, so that is the reason why we even though we specify like this basically like the user ID came second and name was the first when it printed out basically user ID can be first and the name is second. So since it is unordered this is what uh, you may expect um, <coughs> and uh, the other specific thing is basically the when you pass the dictionary as an argument you need to specify with uh, the double star. Now how do we pass uh, the dictionary arguments essentially. Um, To functions, so so uh, the dictionaries can be passed as arguments even to normal functions, um, wanting the positional arguments. So um, how do we do that? Essentially, like so, here again define the area as x y units uh, inches, and then here now we have this data in a dictionary. So how do we pass that information? So here we say basically like area info is. Uh, this is the dictionary that we create which is x equal to 2 y equal to 3 and then units equal to 10 so the three different um, um, keys basically x y and units and then their values are 2 3 and 10 now we can actually even though like this is a normal function we can pass this dictionary into this uh, this normal function by just specifying the double star area in for the dictionary name and then the output is just 6 square centimeters which is essentially the same 2 times 3 and then puts the centimeters uh, square centimeters as a unit okay so now we come to the, the another major topic uh, that we want to talk about uh, today called the lambda functions so the lambda functions are essentially they are shorthand versions of a def statement or a defined statement for a function. Um, it's useful for inlining functions. That means that basically um, you can define functions on the go, uh, and also in other situations where it is convenient to keep the code of the function close to where it is needed, so where it is getting used. Um, one thing to note is it can contain an expression in the function can only contain an expression in the function definition but not blocks of statement there is only one um, expression essentially. So we cannot specify like if statements uh, or um, or loops etc inside the lambda function and then a lambda returns a function the programmer can decide whether or not to assign the function a name. So this is another peculiarity even though the lambda returns a function the programmer can decide whether to assign it to a function uh, function to a name. So let us see how we can use this uh, lambda function. So here is one example this is a very simple example so in normal course we define a function called sum x y and then we say return x plus y and then if you use it we can say like sum 1, one 2 and then this will result in 3 as it shows here. So if you want to use the lambda function um, we can directly create like sum 2 equal to lambda x y and then we need to specify this column same as here just x plus y. So this is like just a shorthand representation of this, this line to here and then when we say like sum 2 1 2 that is also the same. So we can use these lambda functions wherever the function objects are required 
um, they are syntactically as I mentioned like this is a single expression semantically they are just syntactic uh, sugar for the normal function definition. Um, another thing is basically um, um, the lambda functions can reference variables from the containing scope. So again like we can limit to that. So another um, thing is basically um, we can say um, this make incrementer and with n and then this function we can define it as return lambda. X, X plus. So if you define it function like this, then um, if you say like um, you can say f equal to make incrementer say forty two, and then f zero will become forty two, and f one is. Or etc. So you can call it this kind of a lambda function. So you can use this lambda not just as a function, but I mean in between functions or quick um, rather than like I mean actually um, using a, a function inside a function, you can use like a lambda inside a function and get better um, uh, coding uh, that way. So um, another example is like you can pass this uh, um, a small function as an argument. So how do we do that? So let's see. Like I mean, so we define a dictionary. Um, actually, a, a list, uh, um, or a, yeah, dictionary basically, which is called pairs. And then we say like okay, the pairs is one, one, two. To say we have this um, pair, and then we say like we sort the pairs pairs dot sort, and um, we define key equals, and here we can specify a lambda function lambda. Pair. The pair is actually pair one. Now, if you execute like pairs. You can actually now. Um, Sort the this um, thing. Uh, in this case, actually, it will give you like basically like one one and two two. But you can actually um, sort it with uh, uh, actually like reverse sort on this one. So basically, like you can actually do the pair will now become if you if you do the pairs, it's essentially it's two two and one one. So this is one one uh, application essentially like where you can specify the the lambda um, expression to, to uh, return a function essentially. Okay. So now um, we go into um, some more details essentially um, and other functions essentially. So um, 
here we talk about uh, apply. So um, in a, in very general context, you may not know ahead of time how many arguments need to get passed to a function. This is like a typical uh, scenario, essentially the variable arguments, um, and also like I mean, if the function itself is built uh, dynamically, then you won't know essentially. So the apply function calls a given function with a list of arguments packed in a triple. So um, that's the usefulness of uh, apply. So here we can say basically like we have a function definition is sum x y return x y. Now we can actually call call this um, to execute this function using apply, so that it's basically. Um, um, we call we pass this um, this entire function as a triple basically that is sum three four and then the result is seven. The apply can handle functions defined with f or with lambda so that those things are possible as well. So now um, also like apply can make the third argument which is the which is a dictionary of um, keyword arguments essentially. So here an example um, name arguments star arguments we know that this list and then uh, the dictionary we want to print this whole thing and again here we have defined these two um, variables and if you want to print this essentially we can um, just say apply name arguments args and the uh, aw args and then it prints the whole thing. So again you can see that basically you can pass the function name the its arguments all in one shot and then you can get it executed. So here if it is a variable name like a variable length of um, the, fun the arguments you can still get executed uh, with this function. So um, essentially like I mean the key thing to note with apply is uh, basically it is uh, the format is essentially like you know, it is a function and then uh, args basically and here you can have the keywords. Uh, this is the general format of uh, apply. Um, and um, one thing to note is actually like this apply itself is uh, deprecated since version 2.3 and uh, an equivalent um, function is just use uh, function same function with star args basically and the uh, star star keywords and like directly this will actually work better basically in this uh, context. So now um, let us look at uh, some other function um, this is what is called the map function. So the map 
calls a given function on every element of a sequence essentially. So um, once you specify the sequence essentially like I mean it basically it is kind of iterate through that uh, uh, sequence. So um, essentially like I mean in other words it is basically applying the function to every item of the iterable and return a list of results. So you can have a single function which will take a single argument but you can apply that to a sequence and then get the result essentially. So you can think of this as like a vectored function. Um, if additional iterable arguments are passed the function must take the take that many arguments uh, take that many arguments and is applied to the items from all iterables in parallel. If one iterable is shorter than the another it is assumed to be extended with none items so we saw that none actually previously and so the remaining will be treated as none for that particular iterable. And if function is none the identity function is assumed so if there are multiple arguments map again uh, returns a list containing uh, consisting of triples containing the corresponding items from all the iterables it is just a transpose at the, at the point. The iterable arguments may be a sequence um, or any iterable arguments and the result is always a list so that is another thing that uh, you may want to um, look at. So here is an example um, it is called double x return times 2. So if you want to apply to this sequence like 1, 2 and 3 all we got to do is uh, the map and then the function name followed by the iterable which is here in this case it is the sequence A and then you get like 2, 4, 6 as a list. So this is a list this is the iterable. That's the function. So the maps in general uh, uh, thing is basically it's a map. You have a function, and then set of iterables. Okay. Um, so what this means is like I mean if we have another set called B equal to say 1, 2, 3, 4 and then if you say map double A comma B So now the answer is going to be like you have 2, 2, 4, 4, 6, 6 and then 0 or none, 8. So that is the list that you are going to get. And then we can also like um, add the lambda inside this uh, map function. So here directly we write lambda x x times two, and then a, and then the same result. So here we don't have to specify that this x equal to x plus x times two. This is a um, another function called double. So we omit this double, and then directly we map this, we get the same answer. So some more uh, on map. Um, so here, this is something that we saw earlier. Um, we can also like add these two essentially. Like so, here we specify two variables, basically x and y. X plus y is the thing. So here, this sequence is assumed to be x, and this sequence is assumed to be y. So you get like every pair added, and that will be the result. So one plus four. 5, 2 plus 5 is 7 and then 3 plus 6 is 9. Again here if you omit one of them say like I mean it is 1 comma 2 and then this is 4, 5, 6 then our answer will be like 4 I am sorry 5, 7 and then 
six six you know because third argument is assumed as small. So it won't error out saying that they are two different um, um, size arguments. It will just generate that this result. So now the the next one is um, filter. So these are all like built-in uh, functions. There are many 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 built-in functions in um, um, in um, uh, Python. We will go through like some of them. Um, and let's see. Like I mean, um, we may be able to go through like some more uh, later on. So the next one is uh, filter. Um, the filter command essentially is uh, it's, um, it works on lists. Unlike map, it returns only the selected uh, list of items. So we saw the filter commands in tickle to um, specify, like I mean, some way to uh, restrict the data. So similarly, like we can also use filter in um, uh, Python. Um, and then um, the filter command essentially, like I mean, it's um, it's basically like so you can specify filter as filter um, function, and then the iterable. So this is the typical specification or this is the um, format for the filter command. Um, um, basically, what it says is to construct a list from those elements of the iterable for which the function returns a true. Iterable must be either a sequence, a container which supports an iteration, or just an iterator. And the iterable is a string or a tuple. The result also has the same type. Otherwise, it always uh, it's a returns a list. The function, if the function is none, basically like here there is nothing, none, then the identity function is assumed and basically just copied back. So the same thing is just um, um, written. Uh, so all elements, uh, actually, like I mean, the, all elements that are false, uh, they are just removed, and then you get only the, all the true elements. So that's something that you may want to uh, know. So the other uh, thing about uh, filter is also basically like when you specify like function and iterable, it's equivalent to item for item in iterable if function item. So this is the same as item for item in iterable. If function item, so you can think of filter as a shortcut for this command. Basically, item or item in iterable if function item. So the function item returns either true or false. So if this is true, then that becomes the item. From for and you iterate inside this iterable, all all the items. Look at all the items. So that is kind of um, you can you can think of this basically as how it is actually written. And you can also add additional conditions basically. Uh, that is, you can say like if function is not none. And the item for um, item in the iterable if item basically like so it also tests for whether item is true or not if function is none okay so that is the second condition that I talked about so here we have an example it's basically filter lambda uh, x. X, you know this one basically. Um, if um, the um, the remainder essentially like from that division is um, equal to zero, and then we give this range. 
that is uh, minus four to four. That's your iterable. The range is iterable, and then the function is uh, yeah. So now um, we will see like I mean how this thing is um, um, this thing works essentially like so um, it iterates from minus uh, this four to four, and each one, and then basically it divides by two, and then compares the remainder. Um, so um, whether that is uh, equal to zero. So for four minus four, the remainder is zero. So this becomes true, and that's filtered out. Next one is minus three, and the minus three actually, like now, the remainder is not zero. Um, it's actually minus one. So that's omitted and then when you go to minus 2 again it is 0 so it prints the 2 and then um, same like 0 and then 2 so it prints out all the even numbers within this range and um, if you look at this one there is one thing is basically it um, is not the last one is not um, listed here basically it only up to 2 it is not the 4 is not there that is because if you recall the range function does not include the last value given in the range, so it is like n minus one. Um, so you may want to um, um, uh, pay some attention to this essentially, like when you are actually writing the program, because um, if you want to include that four, then you need to extend the range past the the four. So now um, we go to another function called the reduce. Uh, reduce is just like map, but it reduces the list to a single value, and then this is using some operation. So again, it's a function and the iterable, but here the function is essentially like I mean, just um, go ahead and add um, the or basically like I mean, it, there is a it it um, um, it essentially like uh, gives the last um, so um, so the, the the so it reduces this list into like this uh, single uh, value so each operation acts on the result of the last operation and then the next item in the in the list so here we say like lambda x y x plus y so basically it just um, First one is like I mean it's again zero, so it's basically it gives to zero, and then it adds plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and then the final result is ten. So now um, let's see some uh, the list comprehensions. Um, Um, these are really not uh, functions, but they can replace functions, basically maps, filters, etc. So um, essentially, we can specify uh, the list as essentially like I mean, x um, power two or x in range nine. So it gives you all the square numbers from um, zero to eight, as you know, like I mean, the nine is excluded from the range. So that's what you'll get. 
and then um, we can also like to, to get the um, idea of um, um, actually like a square number um, and then which is uh, also divisible by uh, 2 and or even square numbers uh, that for that we just specify this basically like I mean this is like all the way to up to 9. So it prints 0, 4, 16, 36, and 64. It means 1, 9, 25, and 49. Um, so essentially, like I mean, so it, it's like functions that you are putting it inside a list, but it is expanded and basically it's uh, expanded as a function and then the with the, the real operation that uh, goes on. Now, the other one is x plus y for x in. One, two, three, and for y in 100, 200, 300, the result is basically it adds up x plus y for each of the x. So it's 101, 201, 301, then 102, 202, and 302, and then finally um, 103, 203, and 303. So this is the result. So we, we talked about the iterables. Uh, so there is a concept of generators and uh, iterators. Uh, sometimes it may be useful to return a single value um, at a time instead of the entire sequence. So for that, we use the generator essentially. Generator is the function which is uh, written to return values one at a time. The generator can compute the next value. And save its state, and then pick up again where it left off when called again. So syntactically, the generator looks just like a function, but it yields a value instead of returning one. So, and a return statement will actually terminate that uh, sequence at all, uh, sequence altogether. So un un until we see a return statement, it basically it, uh, keeps that single value around. So here is a generator example. So we define squares essentially, and then for i in range x, yield that is the the new one, which is the generator, and then um, i power two. And then we basically use this as for i in squares x and uh, squares four print i. So now it, it is going to print just one value at a time um, essentially that is 0, 1, 4, 9 and it keeps the last value at this point. And then we can get the next element in the sequence uh, from the next function. So z squares 4 and the first one first time z next when we use it it becomes 0 which is the first one. And then that v next will become one, and then so and so. So now the persistence of mutable default arguments. Um, so the default arguments which are mutable persist between the function calls um, essentially so these are like static variables so um, if they are like mutable default arguments they continue between the functions and this may not be the behavior that we want um, so if we do not want this behavior we need to copy the default at the start of the function body to another variable or move the default value expression into a body function and the body of the function. So this is basically like something that uh, you may want to pay attention again this is another quirk of Perm Python um, because of this we want to do this okay. So now um, that finishes um, this um, this lecture so in this lecture we actually went to um, a couple of things one is mainly the lambda function. Then we also looked at some of the, um, the default functions that are available inside uh, Python. Uh, the few ones are like the apply, which is kind of deprecated right now. You can use just the function call, just like uh, what is specified here. 
as uh, directly and then uh, the map function then um, we also looked at the filter and then reduce um, we also kind of learned how to uh, write functions in form of uh, lists basically so if they are not lists and we actually write functions and it is comprehended as a function and uh, it is um, applied as a function so we can actually like uh, write these kind of uh, commands into a list uh, syntax and then um, call it as a function and then finally we actually uh, learned about the generator as a concept uh, we still need to look at the iterators which we will do at a later stage but um, so and then we saw this example of how to use the generator and then finally one of the rules of um, Python is essentially like any kind of um, default arguments they persist between the function calls uh, if they are mutable. Uh, so if you do not want this behavior then we need to copy the default at the start of the function body to another variable um, or we have to move the default value expression into a body of the function so inside or outside change to another variable. So that is pretty much uh, the um, lesson for today uh, basically the lecture and um, again we will pick it up in the next class. Um, Thank you.